welcome back to this video. This is a continuation of the C# beginner series. If you are new here, kindly subscribe and do click on the notification bell to be updated when new videos come out. Previously in this series, we had looked at access modifiers where we looked at the public and the private access modifiers. If you missed that, please Go back to that video and watch it before coming back to this video. So in this video, we'll be looking at the internal access modifier and the protected access modifier. The internal access modifier limits the visibility of a data type or member to only code within the same project or assembly. Now, I must say that for the internal for the protected, for internal protected and protected private, private protected, you will not use those other for as much as you will use the public and private, but it's good to know and have your toolkit. And in fact, if you don't really grasp what it means for now, you could even leave it and go on with other things and understand other concepts in C -sharp before when you will need them. We can come back to this in the future. But I just need to put this out so that you also know that we have something called the internal access modifiers and the protected counterpart. So as we've said that it limits the visibility to only code within the same project. Let's just look at that quickly. So you know previously we had this particular class that we created class name and we had all of this which worked fine so what i will do is i will create another project so i just right click on the solution here if you go to add you will see new project so i will just add a new project and let me just leave it as a console application so i will have a and i'll just call it new project so basically this is a new project here so if you look at here you will see the normal project we have the access modifiers in c -sharp and we have this new project here sorry about that we have this new project here where we have this program.cs so this program.cs is for this one and then you have this other one for so you see that we have two projects here basically so if we if we go back to the program.cs where we were working before the former project you will see that we have our class there and we have our properties and methods within them. Now, if I come here and I create another property and I call it, give it the internal, and let's say, let's call it string uh, internal, let's just say internal property, internal property, let's just give it that, and that is fine, that looks okay. If I come here, and I say object one dot inter. You see, we have the internal property. We can see it here. So the internal is almost like the public, except for one place or one situation. So we can see it anywhere, like the public. We can see it here as we can we saw. But when we go into another project, and we say, for example, let's have another object here. So let me let me clean this up here. So let's say we have objects two here, and we wanted to create something based off of the class name. So we need to add that particular assembly here. So what you just do, you could normally if you just do control dot, you should be able to. Sometimes it doesn't, uh, it can't find it. So what you could just do is if you just go to dependence in the new project, if you go to dependencies, you see add project reference. And then you can see the other project there, and you can just press OK, and it will add that particular dependency. So see, the error goes away. So you see, we have object two, and if I check object two, you see we should be able to find our ID. Yes, our ID, you will be able to find our method. I think what's the name of person is the name of the method, but if you check, we don't have. 
the new one we created called the internal. So if I try to write that, you see, it doesn't have that. We do not have internal accessible rather at this particular project. Even though if we go back to this project, we see that we can access it here. So if we say object one dot internal property, we can access it within this. Okay, so is this string? Sorry. So you see, we can access it within the same project. It is within the same project, so we can access it. But in another project here, we can't find it. It's as if it doesn't exist. So this is useful for people that maybe when you build applications or you write libraries for other people to, to use. That's where you have like the intern, internal uh, uh, item access modifier used. So if or you or internally within your team, you do not want that particular um, method or variable to be accessible outside of that particular project. In case you want to use it within another project, you do not want it to be accessible in that other project. That is where you use the internal uh, keyword. So if I come back to my program with this, we see that internal is accessible. Here. The same thing happens. Is applicable to method whatever i mentioned for properties is also applicable to method so if i call string and i say do another thing this is going to be accessible here so i can come here and say object one do another thing you see that is fine no error is true but i cannot come so basically i need to return let me just return something here so I don't find any error here. Everything is fine here. But if I come to this other project, I will not be able to do that because it is an internal method. So it's not accessible here. So even if I come and say do another thing here, it will not work. It will throw an error because it's not accessible here. It said, you see, it said it's inaccessible to, to its protection level because so it knows that it exists, but because it is given the internal uh, assets mod modifier, it knows that no other project should be able to access it. So let me take that out. So if I come back to this, and if I go to access modifiers in C Sharp, that particular project, if I open and create another class, so let's just create another class here, so that we see that even within the same project, it doesn't matter where it is, our class is created so we could just come here and let me just have a method so that public void method just to show what i want to show us here so let's say we have uh the class so new class name now we see that do another thing is accessible here the reason why we can find do, a, do any another thing even though it is internal is because another class is in the same project you see all of these both another class and programs are all under this project called access modifier here if you look here you will see that the project program and the another class all of them exist within this project so even if i create another file so if it is within the same project it's still accessible but if it is another project it cannot be assessed if it is internal. So that is where the internal keyword is used. Unlike the internal keyword, uh, the protected restricts access to everyone except those within the class or those that derive from the class. Now, we will talk more extensively about inheritance later in the series where we talk about OOP principles. Uh, but here, just know that when we have the protected access modifier, whoever derives from it will not, I mean, only those rather that derive from it can actually make use of those uh, properties or methods. So let's just look at an example. So if we go back to my program.cs and you know we have class, if I have something called protected, protected string and I say this is a protected property if this is a protected property now if I come here and I say object one 
dot you will see we do not have the protected so even if i write pro you see we do not have the protected property here because it's not accessible to anywhere else no place else can access it except for example a derived class so if i come here and i now create public class let's just public class another class name now how inheritance works in c sharp is just you just need to use it like this don't worry we'll talk about inheritance extensively when we look into inheritance but for now just know that this is uh this class another class name is a child is going to be called the child class and is inheriting from the class name if i come here now and i say uh protected oh sorry let me just create a method so method and i come here and i say protected you see i have access to protected property here but i do not have access to it outside of a class that does not inherit from class name so if you come here now so you know here i have protected property and i can do something with it i can say set or i think i said that as a string so i could put it as a string and this will work fine okay it's like i didn't spell it correctly so let me just check how did i spell that protected property oh, okay Prop oh i didn't okay so protected property and it's fine with it but you find out that if for example we have a private i mean we have this public we have id we have name so if i come here you will find out that id is also accessible here we could put id is a number so i could put something there and it works fine no complaint we also have the internal the internal is also accessible within here internal property we see it here it's also not train error but if i come and i want to use this private and i said i want to use private and i say name if i say name and i try to put in some string here like since name is a string we have an issue here because this is a private name is a private property you cannot access it outside of the original class where it is called the class name so the major difference between protected and private is that whereas private is only within that particular class protected allows even those that are inheriting from it so like another class name inheriting from class name it's fine then we have access to the property i mean to protected property so if we remove this that and is no more inheriting from it we find out that even this protected property is no more doesn't have access anymore to this particular uh, protected property and so outside of that particular class you will need to actually come and you will need to uh, you will not be able to do anything with it so if i come here again and i say object if i try to create another object i say another object if i come here and i say new class name I still will not have access to it so for example i can't come here and i will say i won't see the protected property here i won't see it so that's something important to note so it's important to note that the protected keyword is used for where we have inheritance because you want those that inherit from it to be able to have access to it because if we use the private even those that inherit from it will not have access to it very important whereas the public is accessible everywhere the private gives access only within the class name the internal gives access to everything so far you are within the same project but the protected gives access to everything that is within the class and also that is deriving from that particular class by inheritance uh, so protected is actually just used within the concept of inheritance that's important to note 
So that is the protected access modifier. So we say here that this means that it is used when you want to have access to its derived classes um, members. So for example, in the example we saw, we saw that in the protected property, when we have another class called another class that inherited from class name, we saw that it worked fine. It didn't throw error. It had access to the property there. But outside of that, it will not have access to it. I hope this was clear. If we are finding this a little bit difficult to digest, you could ask and I will respond. But if after that is still not very clear, it's not something you should be bothered about at this point where you're trying to learn C sharp because you will actually not need them at least at this initial point of your development uh, career or your learning phase, for example. So, but it's good to know that this exists and what they actually try to have an idea of what they actually uh, do. I hope this was clear. If not, please drop in the comment section as I've said and I'll respond. And I'll see us again in the next video where we'll touch upon the last two, which will be the protected internal and the private protected. Thank you. And I'll see us in the next video.